you hane from the outside. If you hane from the inside, you're screwed. Welcome back to another The Essential Invasion series video. And today we are going to take a look at this shape and this shape. This shape we are very familiar with. Dealing with this invasion is something that we see quite often in our games, but what is this? This seems not familiar, right? But let me show you how we can get this shape. Why first, splits black and black applies pressure on this stone, and white, instead of making this two space extension, white plays this three space extension. And black invades over here, when white jumps, black doesn't want to get surrounded like this, so black has to jump too, and white uses this kosumi to control this stone. And the thing about this stone is, it can live. It's not dead, but we usually consider it dead because trying to save this stone really hurts the outside. If your opponent tries to run from here, like this, then you can block, and when he plays here, you don't play this inside a uh, hane. You hane from the outside. When black pulls back, just defend your weakness, and black is going to play here too, trying to live and pulls back. Again, defend your weakness, and black still needs another move to live. But from here, because you got these extra stones over here, you can jump into the corner. This way, black destroyed only a few points, but you're taking much more than that by playing this 3-3. On top of that, you got this influence. And because you got this thick stones over here, this corner is also going to get affected. Later on, if you play this, it seems like there are a lot of pressure on these two stones, right? If black simply defends, then depending on the situation, you can even play this to grow whatever is over there. Before I move on to the next variation, I want to remind you that when black plays here, if you hane from the inside, you can resign the game from here. So hane from the outside, when black pulls back, defend your cutting point. Again, when black hanes from here, you play here. Let me quickly show you what's gonna happen. You have to capture this stone, and black plays here. Even if you play here, black gets to connect, and this is still not alive. You have to do something. And black, since everything is connected, can cut you, and you got a floating group, two floating groups out of nowhere. That's terrible result. So always remember, when black attaches over here, Hane from the outside, just try to surround your opponents trying to live stones. That's the key of answering these kind of invasions. Always try to not kill your opponent. Just surround your opponent, abuse him, imprison him, just don't kill him. By imprisoning your opponent, you're basically bullying your opponent, and by bullying your opponent, you're going to get much more profit out of him compared to just flat out killing your opponent. It's like deck collecting, right? Just kidding. Now let's take a look at another possibility. Instead of black moving out like this, what if black peeps first? Yeah, it seems very annoying, right? You can first connect, and as soon as black plays here, we go like, oh, I'm gonna get split it in half. I have to resend the game. But no, black is flat out dead, not dead, but black can resign the game from here. If black plays here, then you can cut and capture everything. So black has no choice but to come out like this, but from here we got a very cool move, which is not this, this, not this, this. Remember, I made this mistake before, uh, when I was still in a Q game thing, and I played this, and immediately I went, ah, what am I doing? So always play this Maw Knights. This way, black cannot come out. You get to fully surround your opponent. And if this happens, black is probably going to die. If black plays here, you just block. If black plays here, you block. And what can black do? Even if black makes an eye, you just, 
Atari and play here. And even if black cuts, you still have a lot more liberty than black. All right, that's it for this shape. Now let's take a look at this one. This is usually, uh, you're gonna get something like this. Even if we don't have these two stones, we are very familiar with this shape, right? In this picture, if our opponents invade in, the most common answer is this, and it's not that great of an answer, but black is gonna either crawl back or live over here. The easier way and the simpler way to answer this invasion is to, remember, if we are on the third line, we play this Kosumi. Even if this stone is on the fourth line, we still Kosumi. Black now has no choice but to slide out trying to live, and your goal is still not killing this group. You're just gonna let your opponent crawl on the second line for a bit to build your influence outside. When your opponent crawls one more time, just block over here, and black is going to live. Living is not a problem. But the thing is, while black is living, black is going to make white too thick outside. Black needs all these kind of terrible moves in order to live. And even at this point, if you look at it, white's influence is too thick, it's too good. But black still owes a move. If black plays away, then white can play here and black is dead. Just remember, white plays here, black is dead. So black needs to spend another move. And if white wants, white can grow whatever is over here. If there are nothing else to play, then white can come back and take away this corner. All right, that's it for today's tutorial. And let's recap. First, when white splits, black applies pressure however black wants. And when white instead of this two space extension, white plays this, black is going to invade, white jumps, this is kind of a joseki kind of thing we see quite often back in the days. And from here, white plays this move. By playing this move, although black is not dead, we consider it dead. Because if black wants to save this stone, white gets too thick outside and black loses this corner. What happens if black actually tries to pull it out? Then you can just block and when black plays here, block again. Again, remember, you do not hane from the inside. You hane from the outside. If you hane from the inside, you're screwed. When black pulls back, secure your cutting point. When black attaches over here, again, you do not hane from inside. I can't emphasize it enough. Some people want to capture these stones so badly that they hane from inside, but that's gonna get you into trouble. So Hane from inside, I mean outside. When black pulls back, connect, and black owes a move. And now you can move away or take away this corner. From here, what if black peeps first? Then that's even better. White can connect when black extends. You can Hane. If black dares to Hane back, then you can cut and capture everything. So black, can play this move, but still we can play this Mount Knights and capture the whole thing. Now let's take a look at this one. When black invades, you don't have to complicate things by playing this attachment. You just play this. Sometimes you can even play this, but that really, uh, if you're good enough, then you can play this, but just settle with this one for now. Black has no choice but to try to live, you can shoulder hit this stone when black crawls on the second line. Block when black harness, I mean attaches. Again, you block when black pulls back. Defend your weakness. Black has to bump white really thick in order to live. When black plays here, just again, defend your weakness. When black plays here, defend your weakness. Although it seems like black is alive, if black plays away, white can capture the whole thing by playing over here. So black needs to spend another move. With the sente, white could expand moyo like this. If there are some stones over here and the boards are already filled, then you can take away this corner. 
All right, that's actually it for today's tutorial, and we will see you next time with another Kifu spread or a tutorial. See you soon.